Roar! <laughs> Chapter 12 Artifacts of Legend Stephen's leftover momentum and failed attempt at reaching out to Rainbow Dash left him falling upside down from Pinkie Pie's second story window. His stomach and heart jumped into his throat as gravity took him down. A second later, he made contact with something that was far too soft to be the grind. His eyes clenched shut as he was sent back into the air. He was only airborne for a fraction of the previous time before hitting a much harder surface and rolling at least once. Falling from a second story window wasn't as painful as he thought it would be. However, it was possible that the rush of adrenaline was shielding him from some of the immediate pain. If that were the case, he'd feel its full force once it wore off. And he was not looking forward to that. Certain he was on the ground now, he immediately tried to get to his feet. But a sick feeling in his stomach and four legs Quaking nervously prevented him from doing so. Stephen, are you all right? Twilight's voice called out to him. Oh my gosh! Pinky's voice chimed in. I'm so sorry. Is he all right? Rainbow shouted. Pinky, what happened? Twilight asked worriedly. I bumped him, and he slipped on some punch, and then boom! He went right through the window. Stephen felt a pair of front legs wrap over his body. Stephen, please wake up! Fluttershy's voice pleaded. Stephen tried to say, I'm okay. But between his pounding heart and unwinding stomach, he couldn't get his voice to cooperate, and then only a painful groan escaped. Speak to us, Stephen! Rainbow begged. Are you hurt? Stephen took a deep breath and got a hold of himself enough to open his eyes. It took a while for them to focus in the dark, but eventually he was able to make out four ponies in the moonlight. There were three easily recognizable silhouettes of Pinkie Pie, Rainbow Dash, and Fluttershy. Saddlebag wearing unicorn with the purple glowing horn must have been Twilight. A second deep breath calmed Stephen's nerves, enough to force out. I'm all right, I think. Twilight sighed in relief. Oh, that's good, she said before looking back and sending a beam of purple light to a glowing mattress placed under the window. The mattress vanished into thin air, and she brought her attention back to Stephen. Stephen finally got himself onto his stomach, but the fact that his legs were still quaking and his stomach was still trying to settle down continued to keep him from standing up. Rainbow Dash hovered down, held up his head with her hooves and peered into his eyes. What are you doing? Hold still and look at me. Rainbow ordered. Stephen never broke eye contact as Rainbow moved her head up and down and side to side. She gave an approving nod before asking. Do you think you can stand? I can try. Stephen said. His stomach was almost settled, but his legs were still quaking slightly. What are you doing here, Twilight? He asked, trying to get his mind off his nerves. I came to find you. I might know how the spare traveler spell works, but just as I was about to come knock on the door, you flew through the window. Stephen was almost up, but as soon as he put his left hind leg on the ground, a sharp pain shot through it. He yelped and lost his balance. With a surprised gasp, Pinky zipped to his side to keep him from falling. What's wrong? My ankle is messed up, Stephen said through gritted teeth. Which one? Back left. Twilight trotted around Stephen to get to his hind left leg. With a hop, Pinky moved out of her way, but kept supporting him with one hoof on his shoulder. She had an apologetic look in her eyes and a compassionate smile. This one? Twilight asked, lightly poking the ankle. Stephen cringed and recoiled as a sharp pain cut through his leg like scissors. Yes, that one. Pinky threw her front legs around Stephen. I'm so, 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 so sorry! Guilt filled her voice as she clasped onto his chest. Will a hug make it better? It's all right, Pinky, said Stephen, as he carefully sat himself down on the ground 
with Pinky continuing to hold on to him. No, it's not! She frantically retorted. This was supposed to be your best night ever, but it pushed you and you fell, which must have been super scary, and now you're hurting most like a terrible friend because it's all my fault! Steven couldn't see what Pinky was doing, but it felt like she was trying to illustrate what she was saying without releasing him from her embrace. I seriously doubt you had any way of predicting this. Pinky slouched against Steven's shoulders. My pinky sense told me something scary was going to happen. I should have been more careful. She sighed. Steven quickly decided against trying to figure out what pinky sense was or how it worked. He just assumed she was referring to the pinchy knee she mentioned a few minutes ago and moved on. You didn't do it on purpose and you couldn't have prevented it. He reassured her. Pinky responded by lightly tightening her grip. Is the hug working? Stephen wasn't sure if he should be honest or try to alleviate the guilt she was feeling. He settled on. I'm sure it'll be fine. Pinkie Pie released him and gave him the same apologetic smile she had a moment ago. Twilight's horn lit up and Stephen's ankle was encased in the same glow. His skin turned into an x-ray phonograph of the bone. A moment later, Twilight's horn stopped glowing and Stephen's skin returned to its normal opacity. I can't see anything wrong, but we'd better get him to Ponyville Hospital to be sure. Got it! Rumadash declared, rapidly flapping her wings several times and taking off like a scrambled fighter jet. Rumadash returned about 15 minutes later with two scrub-wearing ponies pulling a white carriage with a red cross painted on it. Even though Stephen felt like he could have gotten into it on his own, the nurses insisted on helping him up on account of his limp. One went into the carriage and came out with a wheelchair. With as little use of the hurt leg as possible, Stephen eased himself into the wheelchair and the nurses pushed him into the carriage. Pinkie Pie and Twilight climbed in after them. Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy opted to fly ahead and meet them at the hospital as the nurses strapped the carriage onto their backs. It took a little under 10 minutes for the ponies to run the carriage to a small hospital building. Once there, the scrub ring ponies rolled him out of the carriage down the hall and into a vacant room, where he was helped onto the hospital bed. A few minutes later, a white pony with a light pink mane and a white hat entered the room. After introducing herself as Nurse Redheart, she gave Stephen a quick checkup. All things considered, he appeared in good shape. It doesn't look like you're badly injured. She said with a smile. I'll send in a doctor to find out exactly what's wrong, and we'll make sure you feel better. With that, Nurse Redheart left the room, and silence fell as the group awaited the doctor's arrival. On top of waiting for the doctor to enter, Stephen was also waiting for Pinkie Pie to say whatever was quite obviously plaguing her mind. I hope you're not mad at me. Pinkie broke the silence with a down tone. Did you push me out of the window on purpose? Stephen asked. No. Then I don't need to be mad at you. I wish you had been a little more careful, but all I can do now is hope I'm not actually hurt. At that moment, a caramel-colored unicorn with dark brown mane, glasses, and a lab coat came into the room. A clipboard floated up from his head for a moment before lowering it back to speak. Evening, Stephen. I'm Dr. Stable. I hear you've got a sore ankle. Mind if I take a look? Sure, Doc. He droned unenthusiastically. Just be careful, please. I'm a little tender. A light blue aura appeared around both Dr. Stable's horn and Stephen's injured ankle. The highlighted area faded into transparency as if his skin had been turned into cellophane. This must be similar to what Twilight had done on him that night at the library, or earlier tonight before they came to the hospital. Except instead of Stephen's ankle looking like an x-ray photograph, his bones were clear and in colour. Stephen would have found it interesting if the fact that he was looking into his own body wasn't so off-putting. Dr. Stable blinked hard and Stephen's muscles came into view as well. He narrowed his eyes at Stephen's leg as he studied it for a moment. Blinking hard a second time, Stephen's veins, arteries and flow of blood became visible. After observing this for a moment, Stable's horn stopped glowing and the dark red fur on Stephen's leg returned to visibility. Stable gently placed a hoof on the injured ankle. Looking to Stephen, he said, Let me know when you feel pain. And gently moved Stephen's leg towards his rear. 
A jolt of pain shot up Steven's leg. Oh, that hurts right there. On a scale of one to ten, how bad? I don't know, five, maybe six? Staple gently set his leg back down. I've got good news. Really? Pinky bunched up with a smile on her face. What is it? It's not broken, just sprained and a little swollen. I'll have a nurse wrap it up for you, then we can wheel you out of here. Keep it on ice for a couple of days and try to stay off it without a brace. You'll be back to normal within a week. With that, Dr. Stable left the room. A few minutes later, Nurse Redheart returned to wrap up Stephen's ankle. As soon as that was set, they checked Stephen out of hospital. The group exited the hospital with Rainbow Dash pushing Stephen in a wheelchair. Pinkie Pie skipped by Stephen's right side with a lollipop in her mouth. Fluttershy walked by Pinky and Twilight was on Stephen's left. What are we going to do now? We should find you a place you can relax for the rest of the night. He can stay with me if he needs somewhere. Fluttershy quietly suggested. I like that idea. Said Stephen, after remembering how quiet and peaceful Fluttershy's house was in comparison to everywhere else he'd been. The group turned and started walking west. Rainbow Dash, who was pushing the wheelchair, turned just a little too hard and caused Stephen to bump his bad ankle. It stung, but just enough to be noticed. He looked down at his ankle, which was wrapped up tight in bandages, and then wrapped again to hold an ice pack against his leg. Ooh, well, this stinks. He groaned out. I'd better not wake up with this sprain. That reminds me. I came to find you because I think I figured out how your spirit traveler spell works. That's good. I guess. Actually, this is uh, bad news. Oh, great. Stephen groaned again. What is it? The highest form of a spirit traveler spell was to manifest a body for the spirit. That's how you have a body here. But you have to be careful because your bodies between here and there are connected. So you're saying that's why I woke up with bruises after I broke the library's floor? Stephen asked skeptically. Exactly. Because you haven't been sleeping while you're here at night, it might also explain why you haven't been feeling rested when you wake up in your world. That's just great. But at first, it didn't make any sense that you'd be able to have a body here in Equestria. Even though the higher levels of the spell were written, they're impossible for ponies to do. So then... How am I here? Twilight's horn lit up into a reading light, and a book floated from her saddlebag. Magical Amplifiers. Twilight said after showing Stephen the title. Artifacts of Legend. What? They're artifacts that were forged by ancient unicorns so they could amplify their magic and learn spells that would be impossible under normal circumstances. But you said that a spirit traveler spell could only work if I'm willing to make the journey. Nothing against you girls, but if I'm actually here, that means I've actually been awake for five days. I can't have that. My girlfriend is getting worried, and it's making work even harder for me than it already is. I don't want to be here. The book opened and several pages fluttered by Stephen's face. It eventually stopped on a statue of a pony pushing a large dark orange crystal ball up what appeared to be a mountain. This is the Stone of Sisyphus. Historians think it was believed to greatly amplify the strength of any spell. Its magic might be strong enough to bypass mutual consent and cover the distance between our world and yours. Then wouldn't I be here all the time instead of just when I'm asleep? I have theories, but ultimately, I don't know. That's not all, though. Whoever cast this spell on you would have needed a way to search out and make visual contact with your world. So, he'd need something that could see across space and time or dimensions. He snipped sarcastically, knowing this was going to only get more ridiculous as time went on. Exactly. Twilight flipped a few more pages in the book. The only one listed here that could do something like that is the Eye of Coyus. Stephen looked at the book. Among the text was a picture of a large, dark purple crystal sphere, making the pupil of a crystal carved into the shape of an eye. The eye sat upon a pony-sized crystal triangle with hieroglyphs of some kind carved into it. The whole structure sat atop a marble pedestal. 
It's described in the book as a great giver of knowledge, allowing the user to find anything he seeks if it is in existence. As ludicrous as this had gotten, Stephen knew it was still far from over. Anything else? He asked unenthusiastically. Yes, actually. Twilight continued. In order for the spell to stick to you the way it has, the magic has to be able to carry on for an extended period of time. She flipped a couple more pages to show Stephen a picture of a statue depicting a large, exhausted-looking Pegasus stallion was bent down under the weight of the giant blue gemstone sphere that he supported on his wings. The globe of Atlas is said to be able to hold any spell in effect forever. And you're certain these things actually exist? Stephen asked with a raised eyebrow. Oh, they exist. A lot of the things in this book can be seen in museums across Equestria. Most ponies believe their powers are myth and legend, but my friends and I know better, don't we? Stephen looked up around. Pinky, Fluttershy, and Rainbow Dash were all nodding their heads. How exactly? He asked out of curiosity. Twilight flipped a few more pages until the book reached a page depicting a question mark inside of twelve pointed stars and surrounded by five orbs of various colors. These are the elements of harmony. My friends and I had used them before. The confident look in her eyes told Stephen that Twilight was certain what she was saying was true. But Stephen had been past skeptical since Twilight started explaining her book. And though the confirmation of her friends was certainly something to consider, it was not yet enough to convince him. Duly noted. But it's not to worry. I've got it all taken care of back home. Within a couple of weeks, I'm going to stop having these nonsensical dreams and go back to sleeping like a normal person. There's still more things you need to know about your situation. There is... Stephen said, getting irritated. What else could there possibly be? You've thrown everything but the kitchen sink at me tonight. Or is that a magical amplifier that keeps me in this world too? Please don't shout. Fluttershy asked quietly. Yeah, come on, Stephen, said Rainbow Dash. We're trying to help you out here. Stephen, Twilight continued. All three of those artifacts would be needed to summon you and keep you here. One of them was stolen from Cloudsdale's museum last week. It's just like I thought back when you and I did research together. Someone is calling you here. And whatever they're doing it for, it's gotta be something big. Otherwise, they wouldn't have gone through so much trouble. Me? Stephen quipped. Someone is calling me? His voice started to rise. Pinky chimed in. Maybe someone really wanted to make a new friend. Stephen ignored Pinky's ridiculous suggestion. Why in the name of all things sacred would someone call me? Do you know who I am, Twilight? Twilight paused to think about it. After a moment, she put on a fake smile and said, No? I'm nobody. That's who I am. Stephen shouted into the night. I'm a bottom-of-the-food-chain customer service representative for a construction company specializing in residential renovations. I have an associate's degree in business from my local community college and a house in the suburbs that I'll be paying off until I'm 50 years old. Stephen's wheelchair stopped moving and Rainbow Dash appeared in front of his face. Hovering at his eye level, her eyes narrowed at him. Hey, keep your cool. You're scaring Fluttershy. Stephen stopped and looked to his right, where Fluttershy had been walking. She wasn't there. So he cranked his neck further back to see her barely within the light of Twilight's glowing horn. She was standing still and hiding her face behind her mane. Please don't be mad at us, she said quietly. Stephen covered his face with a foreleg. I did it again, didn't I? He said to himself. He took a deep breath to settle himself before continuing. I'm not mad at any of you, he said calmly. The stress of all this is starting to get to me. I'm sorry, Fluttershy. After a moment, she walked back over to Stephen's side, and they continued on their way to her house. Anyway, what I'm trying to get at here is that there is no way that anyone in their right mind would call someone like me to do anything if they knew who I am. I'm not anyone special, 
And I don't even have any special talents. Every pony has a special talent, silly! Pinky interjected. Look, Pinky, if I had any kind of talent, I'm pretty sure I would have figured it out by now. Regardless of why or why not someone would call you, Steven, the fact of the matter is that you're here, in the flesh, with a spirit body that's connected to your real body, wherever it is. I came over to Pinky's to warn you of that because you've already gotten hurt once. You being here is a big risk for you, and I don't want to see any pony get hurt. Stephen was silent for a moment as he tried to collect his thoughts. <sighs> I'll humor you for a moment. If I wake up with a sprain, I'll take you seriously. Sounds good to me, said Twilight. Then we'll try to find out who's doing this to you and, and why. How do we do that? Rainbow Dash chimed in. There's gotta be a million unicorns in Equestria. How do we find which one took the artifacts? What if we found out who has access to the other artifacts? Fluttershy suggested. That's a great idea, Fluttershy. I've seen the Eye of Koyas at the Canterlot Archaeology Museum several times before I met all of you. We should start there. Yeah, and maybe we then we can even find the jerk who robbed the Cloudsdale Museum. Oh, so we're going on another adventure? Pinky beamed, hopping up and down. I'll start packing. When do we leave? For Steven's sake, we should probably figure this out as soon as possible. We'll leave as soon as Everypony is ready tomorrow. But Twilight, what about Steven? He's not in Equestria during the day. You're right. Twilight thought for a moment. I got it. One of us can stay behind and wait for him, then take an overnight train. Well, that sounds just lovely. Steven said sarcastically. Look, it's obvious I'm a disaster magnet in this world. Plus, if you girls need to travel, I'd either get left behind while you travel during the day, or I'd be holding you back while you wait for me to fall asleep. Wouldn't it be better if I stayed behind? I guess you're right. I'll have Spike come by Fluttershy's tomorrow evening and take you to the library when you appear. You can wait there until we come back with a solution. Don't worry, Stefan, said Pinky as she patted Stephen's head. We'll get this worked out and get you home safe and sound. They pulled up to the door of Fluttershy's cottage. Rainbow Dash dropped down and let out a yawn. I'm thinking it's about time I head home. I'm bushed. She started doing some stretches on the grind. Have a good night, Rainbow Dash, said Fluttershy. Will do, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good night, every pony. She turned her attention to Stephen. And try not to get into any more accidents. I think the only night I haven't had an accident was here with Fluttershy. I should be fine. Rainbow Dash chuckled in response before taking a few running steps and flying off. It didn't take long for her to get out of their sight in the dark night. I think I'll head home too. Have a good night. Bye, Twilight! Pinkie called out as Fluttershy opened her door. Are you going home too, Pinkie Pie? If it's okay with you, Fluttershy, I'd like to stay and help you take care of Stefan. I don't mind at all. It's just a sprain. I'll be fine. It's the least I can do for pushing him out the window. That's up to you then, said Stephen. Leaning forward, he let himself down from the wheelchair, making sure to keep weight off his bad leg. Limping over to the couch with a small hop, he got himself onto the sofa with a small hop and made himself comfortable. Do you need anything? Fluttershy asked. I'll be all right. Thank you for everything, though. Oh, it's no problem at all. You just try to get some rest and I'll see you tomorrow. Sleep tight, Fluttershy! Said Pinky as she took a seat next to Stephen. Good night, said Stephen as she walked up the stairs to her own bedroom. Stephen relaxed his head against the couch's throw pillow and closed his eyes. You're sure you want to try to keep me company, Pinky? I'm just gonna lie here, so I'll be a bit boring to be around. He had planned on trying to replicate the results he had from simply laying down with his eyes closed a few days prior. That's alright. It's 
better to be bored than lonely. Pinky said enthusiastically, before letting out another yawn. You look like you're just as sleepy as I am. Are you sure you can do it? Just watch me! Pinky said energetically. Then her eyes slowly dropped shut. Within a minute, she was curled up in her chair and snoring. Stephen couldn't help but find that funny. Once he was certain that Pinky was asleep, Stephen returned to relaxing. It felt good to relax, but time was passing as slowly as one might think it would, lying awake on a couch and doing nothing. There was a clock on the opposite wall that he could watch. Occasionally, he would glance up at it and watch the hands tick for a couple of minutes before closing his eyes. Stephen forced himself to stay in this comfortable position and let his body and mind recover as the hours ticked by. Eventually, the clock ticked seven. And a howling thank you to my Patreons.